Hi and welcome back to a new video and you guessed it right in the previous video we were building a PC for Daniel Abt and um, yeah at the point of shooting this video the PC is not ready but at the time when you're seeing this video he actually just received the PC it's kind of yeah time bubble anyway in today's video we are going to finish this very spe a very special PC our long-term partner Hetzner has a special offer for this month if you are looking for a dedicated root server of the AX NVMe series. The AMD Ryzen CPU based server with Zen 2 architecture will have no setup costs which saves you up to 105 euro. The offer is valid for AX41, AX51 and AX61 servers which come with up to 128GB of memory and depending on the configuration dual 512GB NVMe SSDs or dual 2TB NVMe NVMe drives, which can be further expanded if necessary. The Hetzner servers are based in Finland and Germany and as usual you will have all amenities like fast internet connection and no minimum contract period. Find out more in the link below. And some others of you already guessed this part right, that we are going to build a PC inside a RIM. Uh, yeah. And this is actually an apt R6 RIM, like R6R. They provided this one and I mean it's not the first time that somebody ever built a PC inside like a rim for a car but the way we're building it it's probably the first time ever. That's the current status of our mainboard tray distro plate combination. You saw in the previous video how we CNC cut our distro plate. That's the current status. The mainboard is mounted so far. Same goes for the VGA. The VGA is attached to the riser cable over those 3D printed feet right here. There's still a feet missing for the connection up here. It's like a small clip to hold down the VGA. Apart from that, we're making good progress. Only the CPU will be water cooled over those two channels and the water will be coming from the backside. So three of those four feet are already done and mounted. Only the fourth one is missing and we're going to 3D print that one quickly. By the way, we have some more tools. So we have a normal 3D printer, but we also have this SLS ProShop printer. And that's the one we're going to use for those uh, mounting feeds. SLS printer is basically using, there's a fluid inside and then you're using UV light for the lithography. And then you're basically printing your part on this aluminum plate on top. And there's still a lot to do with our external water cooling solution. You've seen this in the previous video. We're using a Mora external water cooling solution. I mean, the thing itself is ready to go pretty much because the fans are attached to the front, the pump is attached, but you can see there's a lot to do with the cable management. Due to the Corsair fans having so many RGB LEDs and everything, we have so many wires that are leaving the front side and they're all like jammed into this box at the moment. And yeah, I mean, we still have to tidy this up and the box will also be elevated to a higher point so there will be proper ventilation underneath. Yeah, because we in the end only want to have two wires um, going from our external water cooling solution to the PC, power and data connection. So there's our fixture remove it from the aluminium plate, clean it and then good to use it. And here's our 3D printed part. Just have to remove those like surrounding parts, I don't know, fixtures and then ready to mount. Right now we're doing some uh, weight optimization on the rim. Not sure why Apt didn't think of this yet. Just kidding. I mean, we're adding three fans uh, for exhaust, mainly because we will have the air-cooled VGA sitting inside and the ventilation through this will not be that great. So we decided to add three fans on top where the hole is already present and then one more on the left and one more on the right and adding those QL fans.
We're done with uh, adding the three holes. The last thing will be to add the three fans. But as you can see, it's not going to be that simple because it's not a straight line. So we will have to like, make an adapter. Also, because the fan itself has a slightly increased diameter compared to this hole, so we will have to make an adapter. I think you can slowly get an idea of how this thing could look like once it's finished. It's a bit difficult to film the internals right now because it's fairly light outside as you can see, but it's pretty dark inside. Later on, I mean, everything inside will be illuminated. We have an RGB strip on the back of the mainboard, so illumination should be fine. Also from the fans on the side, and by the way for the fans, we just uh, 3D printed those shrouds, like adapter shrouds, uh, to mount the fans on the rim. Um, this one yeah, is a little bit too big, so we're going to make a new one, which is going to be smaller, like half the height, which will make the fans sit closer to the rim. should look much better. Um, yeah, we also added this stand because somehow you, <laughs> you have to fix the, the rim, right? Otherwise, it will just fall down, which would not be great. So we added this. Uh, it's milled out of 20 millimeter acrylic to make sure the rim just stays in place. But as you can see, it's one part missing, so we have to redo that one going to redo that out of uh, white plastic, white POM. And looking at the back side, so far, I mean, the back is really clean right now because all the cables are missing. You can see we added the PSU, which looks great, MSI 850 watt PSU. It's already in place, all the cables are missing. I mean, once we added the cables, pretty sure this will look messy from the back. We're printing the new adapters right now out of white plastic. The whole theme will be black and white, so should fit in nicely. As you can see, the distro plate is not sitting inside the rim anymore. I mean mainly because we had to add uh, the sponsor logos on top, which are mainly NVIDIA and MSI. Added my logo in the center. But yeah, every single time we are unmounting the distro plate, obviously we have to do the like pressure leakage test and we assembled it once and then we decided that we have to redo the O-ring on top because it didn't look that nice. And then when we did that afterwards, uh, we found out that the bottom one was leaking because we did a mistake while mounting. And I think it's like the fourth or fifth time that we are assembling this. That's one part I hate about using distro plates. We're just quickly checking if, especially the RGB strip, which is sitting behind the mainboard is working. Otherwise, I mean, if I assemble everything and then I figure out that the RGB strip is damaged, then that wouldn't be that great. So just going to do a first check and see how it looks like with some light. Oha. Wow. Especially like those, those edges, the way they're lighting up and the logos. It looks absolutely fantastic. We're utilizing the center of the rim to also have USB Type-C, obviously, because that's the internal USB Type-C, which will be directly connected to the mainboard, because our case, our rim, also has to offer, nowadays, USB Type-C. And obviously added a cover on top to make it look more beautiful. Added the up logo, it's actually quite nice. And here we have our USB Type-C solution uh, from the back. It's a pretty long cable actually, but just put it inside uh, this hole. And this way we have a sufficient amount of cable just to route it uh, directly to the main board and it will just be a straight line so you probably won't see it from the front. We also finished our fan shrouds, added them to the rim. Uh, the fans will be added later simply because we also still want to make like a fan bracket on top with some logos on top But it's something we will just do right at the end probably next week And our mainboard bundle is also ready to go sitting completely mounted on our distro plate also added all the cables which Just visually makes this a little bit more messy, but something we have to do we added three display port uh, extension cables to the graphics card and also pretty much occupied every single connection that is available on the mainboard itself with extension cords, simply because I don't know what kind of connections Daniel will be using. But yeah, looks pretty awesome, I have to say. And uh, what's also kind of interesting is that if you look at this area right here, there is some kind of like tension you can see inside the acrylic. This showed up at a point when we added the black acrylic plate, like the black shiny acrylic plate on the back. Previously, it was not visible. But um, with, I don't, I don't know what's the reason for this, but with the black acrylic plate on back, we can see the tension inside the material, like right, right here and 
also here. It's very interesting. It looked like a little bit like an oil film on top, but that's definitely not the case. Like it's perfectly cleaned. So. We're just doing the final touches right now. It still looks messy from the back, but it actually isn't that messy. Um, most of the cables which are going away in that direction are the cables which will be connected to like monitors and keyboard, USB and stuff. So that's not really that much of an issue. Just those like fan cables still have to be organized on the back because we now have the three fans attached to the side. We added those fan grills up style and this is also like Audi front grill style. So should fit the theme nicely. Yeah, not much to do. Not much left, just have to finish uh, some cable management on the back and then we will drive to Daniel to yeah, finally give him his new PC. You can go over to Daniel Abt um, to check out the final result of the PC because I'm not going to show you the front side. Yeah, you can check that out on his channel. Just loaded everything, yeah, now perfect, now it starts to rain. All right, goodbye PC.